Hey guys! As requested in the comments of one of my other videos, I've made this guide for Anachronia. This will be a fairly long video, so to help you find specifically what you're looking for, I've set timestamps in the description so you can skip to whichever part you need. Now time to jump right into this. Whee! How to get there. First things first, how do you get there? The island is located northwest of Gillinor. In order to get there, you have to take a special boat that was made during the Breaking the Storm event, which is located on the river at the dig site. There aren't any requirements to get there, you just simply have to board the boat. I am Lee Real of Gillinor. You will board this boat, sail across the sea, and restore the Crystal Totem! Once you board the boat, you'll get a cutscene of you arriving on the island. And once you land, you will have to navigate yourself and your group through the island, following giant footprints and watching more cutscenes until you end up at the center of the island, the player-owned camp, which leads us to the next topic. Base Camp The player-owned camp. Completely different style of play for RuneScape. But right before I show you the camp, can someone please explain to me why every dino on the island is standing in this one square? The player-owned camp allows you to control workers to gather resources for you, which you can then use to build up your base camp for permanent perks while on Anachronia, and a couple of perks at all times no matter where you are. The base camp is located in the center of the island, and there are several parts of the camp that can be upgraded. Each building requires various resources that you use your workers to gather for you. The different buildings you can make are the town hall, the storehouse, sleeping quarters, a spa, hunter lodge, a slayer lodge, a player lodge, bank, a remote totem charging point, and the anachronia lodestone. Now, to build up your camp, you need to have enough materials gathered by your workers, and then you'll simply talk to Giles at the top of the camp in order to plan and build your buildings. There is also a rare chance that you can obtain materials from training various skills around the island. The highest tier building for the Player Lodge, the Slayer Lodge, and the Hunter Lodge will also require a unique material that can only be obtained rarely while doing various activities around Anachronia. Upgrading each building will give you different perks, such as upgrading the Town Hall gives access to an armor and weapon merchant, as well as a gem and rune store, upgrading the store allows you to store more materials, the Sleeping Quarters allows you to manage more workers and collect materials faster, the spa gives you increased agility XP while training on Anachronia, as well as access to spa pools, which act just like the ones in Ooglug. The Hunter Lodge will give perks to Big Game Hunter on Anachronia. The Slayer Lodge gives damage bonuses to every Slayer monster on Anachronia, as well as the Slayer Helmet Stand, which allows you to place your Slayer Helmet on it. As long as your Slayer Helmet is on the stand, you will gain every passive effect that your Slayer Helmet would normally give you at all times. This means it will always act as if you have a spiny helmet, earmuffs, nose peg, and a face mask on, as well as you will retain your accuracy and damage bonuses against your current slayer task without even having to wear it. The player lodge will heal you when you're standing in it, as well as, once it's fully upgraded, it will give you a skill cape rack. This rack is amazing. Just like the slayer helmet rack, it will allow you to place a skill cape with a passive effect on it, and it will always give you that passive effect, no matter where you are in the world of RuneScape. This can be very useful with a lot of different cape perks, but personally, I always keep my defense cape on there. I do a lot of combat-related AFK money-making, bosses and slayer, so it's nice to have the extra life for any time I mess up in a boss fight or get a little too AFK during some AFK combat. This has saved me many reclaim payments to death. The remote totem charging point allows you to manage your totems you have unlocked on the island easier. A bank chest well, it's just a bank. And the ranch out of time pens. They're not actually located in the base camp, but they do require the same materials. And these are just like the player-owned farm that is at the Ardung Lodestone, which is a pretty big topic, so for time's sake, I won't be explaining that in this video. Big Game Hunter Another one of the big attractions of Anachronia is Big Game Hunter. If you find traditional hunter repetitive and boring, this might be a good change to what you're used to when hunting. Big game hunter is, well, in a few words, just bossing, but for the hunter skill. How it works is you'll go to one of the big game hunter locations and you start the encounter by using the right type of bait for that dino on the bait pad. It will put you in an instance with this dinosaur. 
The way you go about this is you build a big trap which consists of three ballistas with poison spears and a pressure plate in hopes to take down this huge creature. To do so, you have to run around the instance and collect woods, vines, and poison from various frogs to build your trap, all whilst avoiding the dinosaur. If you are in the dinosaur's vicinity for too long, he will chase you out of the instance. The area in which you do not want to be is displayed as a big light blue circle around the dinosaur, and it will turn from blue to green to yellow to red the longer you stand in it. And also, if the dino steps on you, you get stunned for a few seconds. There are some patches of tall grass around the arena, which standing in a patch of grass will allow you to be unseen by the dino even when you're in the danger circle. The dino will move in a pattern around the arena. The pattern will always be the same except for two things they can do. One, the dino can stop and roar. If he does, it'll stop for a moment and it'll reverse his pattern. Second, a group of Judinkos will spawn in the arena and the dino will stop where he is, move towards them to eat them, and then after he is done, he will move back and continue the pattern. The trick to taking down the dinosaur the fastest is all in the poison frogs. Every dinosaur has 90,000 health and is weak to one color poison and resistant to one color poison. There are three colored frogs. The one he is weak to will deal 30,000 damage each spear, resulting in an instant kill. The one he is resistant to will deal 7.5 each spear, and then the one that is neutral will deal 15,000 damage. This means if you set up all three traps with his weakness poison, it will kill him the first try. But there's no way of telling which is the best poison. I would suggest, rather than trying one of each to find the weakness, just do all three of one color. If you're lucky, it'll kill him instantly, and you know now that that's the right color for this encounter. If you get the poison he's resistant to, you just reset up your traps and try a different color in all three. The weaknesses will stay the same for the rest of the instance, so if you find that weakness is the red frog, keep using the red poison until you send them into hiding. The weakness will change every time you send a dino into hiding. A dino will go into hiding for an hour after you've slain the same kind five to seven times. Why would you want to do this? First of all, the XP is pretty great. It can give you up to about 400,000 XP an hour, and for the rewards you get from slaying these mighty beasts, you'll receive a variety of skilling items. Seeds, herbs, dragon hides, uncut gems, and raw fish. And for the rare items, you can get totem pieces, a dragon mattock, and the reinforced dinosaur pelt, which is required to upgrade the hunter lodge to its third tier. They also have the chance of dropping an unchecked dino egg for the ranch out of time. I'll talk about the totems later on in this video. The Agility Course The island of Anachronia is pretty big. Walking about the whole thing can take some time. But to help reduce some travel time, there's an agility course that runs across a major portion of the island. This is the fastest way to travel around to different big game hunter spots as well as slayer monsters. The agility course goes in one big loop around the island and starts and ends at the base camp. It does not matter which side you start on, you can go either way. Not only is it better for traveling around the island, but while you're traveling you earn yourself a fair amount of agility XP, as well as four different totem pieces and codex pages for the double surge, double escape abilities. Whilst traversing around the island using the agility course, you have a chance to get 1-3 to three codex pages, and when you complete a whole lap around the island, you get a bonus 10 pages. You need a total of 500 pages for the untradeable codex, and 750 pages for the tradable version. The pages can be used to either create the double surge, or the double escape ability codex, which when used will unlock an upgraded version of surge or escape that will allow two charges to be stored for each ability meaning you can use the ability twice, right after the other. There is also a rare chance that you'll find some essential oils while training agility, which is used to build the third tier spot in your base camp. Erby Werby Erby Werby is a weekly D&D where you help the ancient Zygomites burn corrupted herbs. The entrance to Erby Werby is located northwest of the base camp. The fastest way to get to Irby Werby from the base camp is by following the agility course around the island until you end up right at Irby Werby. Once you get inside of Irby Werby, there will be a bonfire in the middle of Irby Werby and a bunch of flower or herb looking things around the outer rim of Irby Werby. 
the herbs will switch between being corrupted and healthy. You have to grab the corrupted herbs and throw them into the fire in the middle. Every time you do, you'll get 1 to 4 points. If you throw a healthy herb into the fire, you'll gain half points for 30 seconds. In addition to that, there will be a handful of zygomites that will also run back and forth grabbing herbs and bringing them to the fire. They'll pick up both healthy and corrupted herbs, so you have to take the healthy herbs away from them. Taking healthy herbs from them will also give you 1 to 4 points. There's no time limit to Herby Werby. All you need to do is get 100 points. This took me about 5 minutes to get all 100 points I'm allowed to get from Herby Werby for the week. There are a few rewards to Herby Werby, but they are pretty decent ones. First, there are a couple of lamps. Then there's a seed that acts just like a teleport tablet that'll bring you right to the entrance of Herby Werby. Then there's the herb bag, which will hold 50 of each grimy herb and its upgrade will hold up to 100 of each grimy herb, and a couple of totem pieces, and an Herby Werby pet. Slayer Monsters There were eight new monsters that were released with Anachronia. There are four dinosaurs. The Feral Dinosaur, the Brutish Dinosaur, the Venomous Dinosaur, and the Ripper Dinosaur, as well as four Vile Blooms, the Devil's Snare, Luminous Snaggler, Lamp and Flora, and Liverworts. These creatures each have their unique abilities and traits, which I'll not be going over everything in this video. The biggest reasons you would choose to fight them are for their rare drops. All four dinosaurs have a small chance to drop any of the four pieces needed to make the upgraded Bone Blowpipe, which is a tier 87 two-handed ranged weapon that requires no ammunition and will automatically poison enemies for you with a passive effect that will cause all poison to hit twice as frequently but half as hard. They also have a small chance to drop the Laceration Boots, which allows you to use the Blade Dive ability with a two-handed weapon instead of having to use a dual wield, which means you can equip a halberd weapon and do this. And all four Vile Blooms have a small chance to drop a pair of Blast Diffusion Boots, which have a passive effect that causes the magic ability Detonate to only require half the time to charge. Every Slayer monster on the island has a 1 out of 800 chance to drop a Dinosaur Tooth, which is used to upgrade the Slayer Lodge to its third tier, and a 1 in 1000 chance to drop a Dinosaur Rib Bone, which is used to upgrade the Player Lodge. The Dinosaur Rib can also be obtained through any kind of hunting on the island. In addition to the new Slayer monsters, there's a new Slayer Master. She can be found in the ruins on the southeastern peninsula of the island. She requires level 90 Slayer and 120 combat. She gives 22 points per task, 110 points every 10 tasks, and 330 points for every 50 tasks. One of the biggest perks about using Lenikia, Len, however you pronounce her name, is that she can give you a very broad task. For example, instead of getting a red dragon task, you could get a dragon task, meaning you can choose any dragon and it will count. It just gives you a little more choice and freedom with your tasks. Totems. Totems are items that have to be built by finding and assembling the top, middle, and base pieces, and then placing one on top of these three totem hotspots in order to gain a perk for the week. The perk varies depending on which totem you place, and it will persist until the end of the game week. You can have up to three different totems in place per week. There are eight different totems, and they all require three pieces to craft. There is a totem bag you can attain from one of the NPCs that are standing close to the Anachronia Lodestone. The bag will hold all the pieces until you combine them. Here is a list of each totem, and what they do, and how to obtain them. The Treasure Totem. It reduces the number of steps required to complete a cross goal by one. The top is obtained randomly through Big Game Hunter. The middle is obtained randomly while using the Anachronia Agility course. And the base is obtained by pulling up 20 Ancient Zygomites. The Navigation Totem reduces the duration of voyages from player-owned port by 15%. Top can be found by searching some rubble east of the new Slayer Master, Lenikia. Middle is obtained by pulling up 40 zygomites, and the base is found by cutting an overgrown idol on Anachronia. The Crystal Totem reduces the Elven Clan lockout period when pickpocketing in Prifathenus by 25%. Top is obtained by training agility, 
Middle is found in some rubble on the north ruins south of the feral dinos, and the base is bought from an herby werby shop. The Abyss Totem allows teleportation to itself when placed, with the Anachronia teleport spell. Top is bought from Herbie Werby, middle is obtained randomly through Big Game Hunter, and base is found by searching the rubble in the ruins on the south side of Anachronia. The Intimidation Totem completely removes the kill count needed to get into any of the God Wars 1 bosses except for Nex. The top is found in the rubble on the northeastern ruins, middle is obtained from Lenikia after helping her with a mini quest, and the base is obtained randomly from killing Slayer monsters on the island. The summoning totem increases the duration of all summoning familiars by 10%. The top is obtained while using the agility course, the middle is obtained randomly by killing slayer monsters, and the base is obtained randomly while hunting big game dinosaurs. The auras totem reduces the cooldown of all auras by 15%. Top is found after pulling up all 60 ancient zygomites, the middle is obtained randomly while fighting slayer monsters on the island, and the base is obtained randomly while using the agility course. The Remote Totem Remotely charges all other totems from the base camp. The top is obtained while selling animals at the ranch at a time. The middle is obtained randomly while mining on the island. And the base is a reward from the new quest, Desperate Measures. To pull up the Zygomites, you just have to locate them all around the island and click on them to pull them out of the ground. I'll add a map in the description so you can open it up and zoom in to find exactly where they all are. All of the totem pieces obtained from slaying dinos and vial blooms do not have to be done on task. Each of the totem hotspots where you can place your totems are marked on your mini-map with a D&D symbol. Miscellaneous There are also a fair amount of other resources around the island that don't have any special perks or anything. They're just there to add to how grand the island is. Some examples are tier 40, 60, and 90 mining spots, a few fishing spots, some regular hunting grounds with grinwalls and poyas, also an archaeology material cache for Orthanglass. Well, goodness, that was a lot of information. I hope I covered everything that you came here to learn. If there's something that I haven't covered other than the ranch out of time, or if there's any new content that comes out related to Anachronia, please feel free to add it in the comments to help everyone else out, and I thank you in advance for helping with that. Thank you everyone for watching, and I wish you all happy gaming.